Gibson. The Queen's speech setting out the UK's programme for government offers little comfort to my constituents in North Ayrshire and Arran. And it comes in a context where we have seen the Tory vote across Scotland collapse, with the Labour revival amounting nationally to no more than a lacklustre 1.6% increase in first preference votes on the last council elections in 2017, and its second worst local government performance since devolution in 1999. But I find myself in the odd and strangely surprising position of agreeing with the leader of the Tories in Scotland, the Honourable Member for Murray, a rare event, and I'm sure he would agree with that, when he said that the Prime Minister must, and I quote, reflect on a series of disappointing results for the Conservatives across the UK. The reality is that there's a leadership crisis for the Tories in both London and in Edinburgh, and I'll say no more of that for fear of intruding on private grief. The Prime Minister and his Cabinet would also do well to reflect on its deafening silence over the cost of living crisis, which is hammering households across my constituency in North Ayrshire and Arran, and indeed the whole of the UK. This Queen's speech, as others have said before me, has indeed been a missed opportunity. The Prime Minister should have used this speech to urgently deliver desperately needed support but it seems that standing back and consigning more people to poverty and hardship is the plan, which is disgraceful. Yeah. Although I do welcome proposals in, in, to bring forward measures to protect access to cash in the Financial Services and Markets Bill, following huge pressure from myself and my SNP colleagues, as well as consumer organisation, which and a range of other stakeholders. But these measures must be meaningful and they must be fit for purpose, and I look forward to scrutinising the detail of these proposals. Households are suffering rising food, energy and goods prices, record levels of inflation, with Brexit at the centre of much of this, all playing a part in this crisis. But the government continues to downplay the impact Brexit is playing in these challenges. We in the SNP have consistently called for a meaningful package of measures that would help tackle the cost of living crisis and put money back into people's pockets. However, this Tory government has ignored these calls, with the Chancellor apparently holding off on addressing the crisis until the budget in autumn. Struggling households simply cannot wait until the autumn as they struggle under the weight of increasing hardship. We in the SNP again call for the UK Government, at the very least, to convert the £200 energy loan into a more generous and substantial grant, scrap the regressive national insurance tax hike, reverse the £1,040 cut to universal credit, match the Scottish child payment UK-wide, introduce a real living wage to boost incomes and reduce or remove VAT on household energy bills and follow the Scottish Government's 6% up rating of benefits. Yeah, yeah. Hand-wringing or sitting on their hands from this Prime Minister and his Chancellor and indeed the Cabinet whilst households struggle with the soaring cost of living is unforgivable. There is no end in sight to this crisis so we need action now, yet there is nothing in the Queen's speech to suggest that such action will be taken. As the Bank of England predicts that inflation is likely to rise to an eye-watering 10% later this year, food and energy price rises are placing a particularly high burden on households. Despite the fact that the UK has the highest poverty rates in North West Europe, with 11.7% living below the poverty line, things look sadly as though they are set to get even worse. People are told that work is the best route out of poverty, but the reality is that in-work poverty is rising. This phenomenon of in-work poverty should be a contradiction in terms. It should not exist, and the fact that it does is utterly disgraceful. Yeah, yeah. Instead of a plan to support households through this crisis, we have a Chancellor mm. telling those who are suffering 
because of this crisis that it would be, and I quote, silly to introduce measures now to help people. No wonder people are angry, and so much, Mr Deputy Speaker, for levelling up. Alongside this, the Tory strategy to undermine devolution continues, where Scots are to be punished for not voting Tory by having their parliament undermined via the Orwellian tactic of introducing the ironically named Brexit Freedoms Bill. Much retained EU law is incorporated in acts passed democratically in the Scottish Parliament, and these must be respected. Instead, Brexit bills will deliver nothing but a race to the bottom on so many issues. And I remind the benches opposite, and sadly they are empty, but I would remind them that under Rule 9b of Standing Orders and in accordance with the Sewell Convention, the UK Parliament should not legislate on devolved matters without the consent of the Scottish Parliament. This means that, cons- the co- the, the, uh, this means that under the constitutional arrangements we have, the Procurement Bill, the Trade Bill, the Bill of Rights, the Levelling Up and Regeneration Bill, the Energy Security Bill, the Economic Crime and Corporate Transparency Bill, the Brexit Freedom Bill, the Northern Ireland Troubles Bill, the Social Security Bill, the Transport Bill, the Modern Slavery Bill and the Data Reform Bill will all require the legislative consent of the democratically elected Scottish Parliament and indeed to that substantial list there may be more to add. This shows that the intention of this government is to trample all over devolution and I remind them that riding roughshod over Scotland's Parliament will simply not be tolerated and it will not serve them well. And alongside this, we have an absence in the Queen's speech of an employment bill, first promised in 2019. And there is no animal welfare abroad bill, which would have banned for imports and foie gras. These measures have been quietly dropped. This Queen's speech has been defined not by action, but by complacency and short-sightedness. Scotland needs no more of this. As well as attacks on Scotland's democratically elected parliament set to continue, our resource budget allocation has been cut by Westminster by 5.2% and the capital budget allocation has been cut by 9.7% in real terms. Now, the SNP government is doing what it can to support households during these difficult times. I could talk about the bedroom tax being fully mitigated, the council tax mitigation, the Scottish child payment being doubled, free tuition, free prescriptions, free school meals for all primary school children. I could talk about all these things. But as Scotland tries to mitigate the worst excesses of this Tory government, the Scottish government is hemmed in by Tory cuts to Scotland's budget and by the lack of power over the full fiscal levers needed to tackle the fundamentals of poverty and want in Scotland. A lack of powers for the Scottish Government means that we can only really deal with the symptoms of poverty inflicted by this Tory Government, not the deep-rooted causes of inequality in our society that delivers child poverty, pensioner poverty and leaves many households struggling to make ends meet. The people of Scotland understand the Westminster system is broken. It does not serve Scotland's needs. It does not serve the people of Scotland and their families' interests. Today, the First Minister of Scotland confirmed that a bill for a referendum on Scotland's future will be brought forward with white papers to be published in the near future. For an increasing number of people in Scotland, This cannot come soon enough because they agree Scotland deserves better than this. Scotland deserves to have its own future in its own hands. Scotland deserves independence.